time we're next to tell the truth. Why? Because literally these two ladies are the lead actresses in one of my favorite episodes of Supernatural Never Die. And they're delightful people. And we're so lucky to have them. Please, put your hands together for Julia Regalonso and Katie Sarife. So excited to have you in Chicago. So excited to be here. Hi. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, we're going to leave you to it. Have a good time. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Joy and Katie. How are you guys doing? What? I'm sorry, what? Just kidding, I had to do that. You know, whenever you have a mic and there's crap, you gotta. Anywho. Yeah, how does this work? <laughs> so, um, any, any questions? Any, any takers? Just kidding. Okay. Where's the lines? Oh. No, I don't see anyone. Um, I can start with a warm-up story. Um, so when Katie and I were on the plane to Vancouver, we didn't, I don't think we knew, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think we knew that um, we, that was the other actor, um, but then we figured it out and then um, I was reading Mindy Kaling's book, my friend had like lent it to me, and then Katie accidentally spilled a <laughs> drink on my book, um, so, but it was, it was perfect because um, my friend didn't even need the book back anyway, so. <laughs> That's nice, and what a, what a very Katie entrance <laughs> to just spill all over people. Yeah, that, um, that was fun, and then I was like rapping on set. Do you know yeah, you know yeah, I, I rapped earlier than everyone else. Um, no, oh, I meant like rapping. Like, oh, rapping. <laughs> <laughs> In between takes, but that too. I mean, definitely rap. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Yeah, super fun. Yeah. There's yeah. people now. Okay, cool. Um, I was wondering about your audition process. Like, when you auditioned for the episode, did they tell you you were going to sing, and did they kind of tell you it was going to be like meta, had you seen Supernatural before, that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, my ex-boyfriend, who I'm still best friends with, um, fortunately, uh, he was a huge Supernatural fan, um, and so I'd heard about the show through him, thankfully, and then he also, the one who even showed me the, the song Carry On, he was like, you wouldn't have known that song if it wasn't for me, I was like, thank you. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, so I, so I knew a little bit about it, and um, I got the audition, and he was very excited. <laughs> I was too. Um, and yeah, no, they did tell me that I had to sing. I think the initial round uh, was singing. It was the casting director of Glee as well. So you're, you know, going in and singing for him, you're like a little bit intimidated. Um, but yeah, no, so we passed the singing round, and then, um, the audition process was great. I I loved it. Everyone was so nice, um, so friendly. Uh, you know, just just overall a really great experience. Um, and I loved my my character. Um, my my audition breakdown said like yeah um, this character might go to conventions. I was really excited. It said it was gonna shoot in Vancouver. I was like I want to shoot in Vancouver. Um, and then it said like deadpan like Aubrey Plaza. I'm like, oh, I, that's like the two things I do as an actor. I like either deadpan and like annoying or mean, and then nice and like shy and awkward. So those are the two things I do. And then um, I had also um, auditioned for this casting office like ten times, and like, for Glee and Supernatural. Um, and then I had actually the first thing I read for for Supernatural was K Tran. Um, at that time, the role was K Tran, and I think eventually it became Kevin. Um, and then, uh, but they, they liked my audition and they brought me in. They're like, we passed someone out of Vancouver, but we liked you. So they kept bringing me in. Um, and then it was really exciting to finally get this. And my role didn't sing, so I didn't have to sing for that. Um, yeah. It was really fun. And I feel like our energies played off of each other really nicely. Um, and I, yeah, all the girls were, were amazing to work with. It was a fun audition. 
Yeah, the first round was like just like in the room, and then the second round was in front of a bunch of producers and stuff. So that was a little scary, but. Hi. Um, in your your great episode, um, did you ever see any of the plot or the ending going a different way, or would you want it to go a different way than it did? Hmm. Um. I. I didn't see it really. I mean, I loved the way that it, it went. I, it, I think it was a beautiful episode. Um, yeah, I, I love what they, they did with it. So I don't, I don't think I really saw it going another way. I was very satisfied with it. Yeah, same. The only thing I, I would have wanted is to have come back. That's all. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Could we have left it a little more open ended for Marie and Maeve to somehow come back? Could like, we have the joined days? their team? Could we later come back in college and be like, Damon? Yeah, college. Yeah, college musical. That would have been great. You know, it's off Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, oh, there's two. Two sides. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, I know you uh, played this serious character who tell, told Sam to keep his hands off the keyboard. Uh, I want to know while filming, was that actually Sam or was that just Jared just messing all around? Was he actually in character or would, did you have to keep telling him to? Oh yeah, no, that was in the life. script. <laughs> that was actually one of the audition scenes, um, but it was fun, like, telling a grown man, like, what to do. <laughs> and to be mean to him and stuff. And in life, I'm like, you know, very small and also like, um, and, and also a non-threatening and Asian too, so, um, but then, um, and then Jared is like six foot fifteen, you know, so. <laughs> Hi, um, I was wondering if you guys had like any like special memories or special like from the set so you guys remember. Special, what was that, memories? Mm -hmm. Memories. Oh. Well been starting them, so you go. <laughs> um, well, it was really fun with all the other girls. Um, a lot of them were local from Vancouver, and then we just like, hey, oh, we had brunch. Yeah, yeah, I just saw that picture the other day of all of us at brunch. It looked like I'm like 10. <laughs> yeah, it was before we started shooting, so we got to meet everybody before we started, and that was really fun. And then, um, oh, Phil sent up the director, he sent us like maybe five to eight episodes to watch in advance so we could research and we could know like what this was referencing, so that was cool to catch up. Um, and then at the brunch we got those, um, the 200th episode pins, right? And yeah. Did you, get a, you got a Samulet too, right? Oh okay, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, 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 those are cool. Um, I meant to bring one. Oh, um, oh, and they had a betting pool every Friday, yeah. um, but then it was like low-key, like, trying not to win because then um, you, you come in like just for a couple weeks and then you win this big pot and everybody's like, what the heck? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'm trying to think. So, yeah, a, a, lot, of mem a lot of memories from that, but uh, one that I love, well, first getting there was really cool because you just instantly feel welcomed into this family. I remember both of us talking about that and being like, wow, it feels like, you know, we we're almost joining them on day one, just how, how welcoming everyone was. Um, I remember, and then Jensen and Jared are from Texas, so we had some good talks about that, because I am as well. Um, and then I learned a cool trick from Jensen, and it was how to cross my eyes and move just one. And yeah, yeah, and, uh, and so I've, I've kind of kept that that skill with me, and um, I feel much cooler now because of it. And that's a memory. Oh, I remember the memory with um, with J when we were just like chit chatting with Jared for one of the scenes, and then he said, "Oh, I got this job," and then Katie was like, "Oh, as a server," and then um, Jared was like, "No, but for Gilmore Girls." And I was like, "Right, right, right." He was talking about how he got a job right when he got to LA, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool. What restaurant did you work at?" <laughs> God. I love that you remembered it too, that's how pretty. <laughs>
Oh my gosh. Okay, so first Katie's movie so cool. Um, and then the next Get Out. Is that horror? Is that yeah. 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 I love that movie. Oh yeah. Um, mine is probably The Shining. Yeah, it's so good. Um, just yeah. It's, it's eerie, I love the performances. Um, horror is just really fun, I think. It, it's really cool to, you know, I've gotten to, to work in horror as well, and the behind the scenes of it is, um, is really fun to see how it kind of all comes together. So now when I watch it, um, I, I've learned not to pee my pants while watching horror by just being like, that's a prop. It's, that's blood, that blood is makeup. Yeah, that wasn't the question, but you know. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was gonna ask uh, for fan fiction. You guys kind of play more of a side character, so I was wondering, in general, do you prefer playing the hero or the villain? Villain. <laughs> yeah, you get you get more personality. I like playing the funny side character that has seven lines, and everyone's like, "When's that character coming back?" Like every line you have is gold. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, you don't have like the pressure of carrying the whole thing. Yeah, I can kind of do my one funny thing and then do it again. <laughs> no, I think the villain's fun because it's very freeing and they, um, typically, uh, their flaws are shown a, a bit more, but it's fun to, I mean, acting geek side of it, um, justify and see their perspective, even if you ultimately disagree with it. But yeah, it's just fun. Good question. Hey, I was wondering if you have any strong opinions about things that don't actually matter, like uh, pineapples on pizza. <laughs> no. No, I'm, I'm not a pineapple on pizza person. I can do it, but I'm not big on it. I think mushrooms are um, hairy and gross. <laughs> what? <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. I think mustard is unnecessary. Like. <laughs> I was like, keep going. This is great. <laughs> Do I have any other shot opinions? Um, I love that. I don't know. My God. Like, if you tell, if you ask me a question, I, I, I can tell you my opinion. But off the top of my head, weird ones. No. Um, I don't like Sharpie on paper. <laughs> don't. I just. <laughs> Well, while you're vamping, or, uh, I thought of one more memory, um, it was, oh yeah, okay, so there was a scene that got cut, but it was a scene where we were in the library and like looking, like we were thinking of clues or researching or something like that, and then I had improvised this line, I think like maybe Jared's character was like asking me questions, and then my parents have this saying, like look with your eyes, not with your mouth, so um, I said, I like improvised that line, and I think, um, I was like hoping it would make it in, but that whole scene ended up being cut, um, but that was a fun one. <laughs> yeah, I put mustard on my burritos. Sorry, not mustard. Oh my god. I put mustard on burritos? What? Sometimes. And hot sauce and everything. Okay, I. But, but I do remember that memory. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's it. I'm, not, I'm so weird, guys. Hi. Hi. Next question. Hi, my question's for Katie. Um, I'm from Cleveland, so I'm wondering about the Cleveland Reduction movie and how that experience was. Honest? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, nothing against Cleveland, but I didn't like my experience there because of the content and it was gloomy and it was rainy and we were in the place where this actually happened. So for those of you, I mean, um, who don't know, uh, Cleveland Abduction was this film I did. It was a lifetime film, uh, but it was based on a true story uh, about these three girls who were kidnapped in this guy's basement for about 10 years. Um, and yeah, and so I played one of the girls, Gina De Jesus, and, um, and so we filmed that in Cleveland. Um, and like I said, I mean, I didn't get to experience Cleveland too, too much, but my experience there was like gloomy, rainy, the content, everything like that. Um, the question was, how my, was my experience? Um, yeah, overall though, I think it was, 
as an actor, very fun and satisfying because it's, it's, it was really challenging to get into. It's really heavy stuff, but I prefer stuff that takes a lot of delving into and um, digging deep within the soul, which you definitely have to do for that. Um, but the cast was all really great. Um, Taryn and Sammy were really great to work with. Another strong opinion, I love Applebee's and cheap <laughs> restaurants. They're really, um, they're comforting, you know what you're gonna get, like, they're consistent. We're just gonna keep <laughs> Hi, um, so as an aspiring actress, I just wanted to know if there's any like, tips on getting started in the industry. Um, you know, I always say, like, I don't know if you've already taken classes, but I love classes. I'm a good Asian, I believe in education. Um, and so, you know, just getting out there and learning classes, like, so, so safe, you get to meet a lot of people. Um, and you can even, like, sometimes people, like, um, think they want to do one thing in the industry, but then they, they not find, like, some other pocket of the industry. So even just that, like, trying to get, like, learn different parts of it. Um, and then just auditioning for things, like, even if it's just like student films, um, plays, like just getting out there and working as much as you can. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I think classes are super important in education. Um, persistence. Persistence is, is key and, and passion. You have to really, really love it because you're gonna hear no a million times more than you're gonna hear yes. But if you love it, that yes is going to be so much sweeter, and you know it, it, it's going to get you through all the times in between when you're not working and when you're working. But um, yeah, it, it's it's super fun and worth it if it's a passion of yours. Um, but definitely study, definitely do the work, and yeah. good luck to you. Yes, good luck. And then you didn't ask about writing, but um, I got rejected from my screenwriting class six times at UC Berkeley, and also I got rejected from playwriting once. And um, all, I, uh, I got rejected from transferring to UCLA Film School, um, and I'm a working, I've been a working TV writer like three times. So you know what I mean? Like, you get rejected so much, but it doesn't mean anything because uh, you know you'll still get stuff down the road that are meant for you. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Jordan, aka Chicon Baby. My question is for Katie. Um, me and my niece, Destiny, were big fans of the Conjure and Annabelle universe, and my niece really loves Patrick Wilson. Did you get to meet him at all when filming? I did. He's so sweet. They, yeah. Vera and, and Patrick were so nice, and he's got, like, we, we had a couple scenes together, which was great, and um, he's got a lovely singing voice. Obviously, he was in Phantom of the Opera. He was so good. Right? Um, no, but yeah, I did get to meet him. They were really, really lovely people, and, and everyone that's worked with them has nothing great things to say. And then their relationship together was great. They had great chemistry, Vera and Patrick. Yeah. But, um, say hi to the Hi. I'm uh, born and raised from Flint, Michigan, so fan fiction was definitely one of my favorites. And I was just wondering, do you guys, before you do a role, when you find out like where it's based or anything, do you guys research, like find out anything about the cities or places where you're gonna go? The places, the cities. I should. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I did in that case, um, but I definitely. Speaking of doing the work, that is something I should do more. <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean. For the story, it probably depends on how relevant the city or the place is to the, the story. Um, but as far as like <laughs> looking up the city that we're going to film in, yeah. <laughs> I have to look up all the vegan spots and everything. I'm like, I'm going to hit this place up and this place up. Um, and then it's fun to learn the history of wherever you go as well. Yeah. Hi, my name is Erin. Um, and my question is, so you said in, for prepping for the show, they sent you, would you say like five or eight episodes that you, to watch? Um, so in, but the title of it is fan fiction, and in the actual show, 
they talk about exploring Destiel in the second half. So I also want to, I just wanted to know, did you also have to look up what the heck is Destiel and Sastiel and so that you could kind of get that context, like read some fan fiction? Yeah, yeah, um, uh, Bill talked us through some of it. Um, <laughs> and then looking up some of it. Um, and then I used to be, I mean, I, I really related. I was a fan girl. Um, too, like I, um, I don't know if anybody ever used to watch Invader Zim or like Danny Phantom. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I had an Invader Zim fan site on GeoCities, uh, <laughs> and I was Invader Yaj, which is Joy backwards. Um, and um, yeah, and I, I used to do fan art, and it was like back in the day, I would like hold up my tape recorder to our TV and record voice fights of like. Um, Oscar. Um, like, and then I'd like record that, and then I like play it into my microphone that I had plugged into the USB, so I could upload it to my website. <laughs> so I related a lot to that stuff. And then I had, and then I was a fan of Fairly Odd Parents, and then I got to my first industry job was interning for Fairly Odd Parents at Nickelodeon. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I, um, I used to watch your show when I was ten, and now I'm here interning, and they're like, never tell us that. You made us feel really old. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I've been a fander, I am a fander, I understand this. And then it was also kind of impressed upon us too of like, um, these are like, like we're representing the fans. So we kind of felt the responsibility too of like, yeah, like we're like really smart, real people who like just have a passion, you know, so yeah. Exactly, yeah, that was really, really cool to know that like, we were getting to represent everybody, but then with that came a lot of pressure. And I forget who it was who said it, but someone was like, they're either gonna love you are they gonna hate you? And I was like, okay, <laughs> cool, no pressure, no pressure. All I can do is do the best I can. Um, so thankfully, thankfully you guys loved and supported it, um, and it went well. So yeah, but it was, it was fun. Definitely, uh, oh yeah, we had to learn what a Sam girl and a Dean girl is. I'm like, oh, I think I'm a Dean girl, yeah. <laughs> I definitely, yeah, I, I agree with her, yeah, I was a Sam girl. So, yeah, yeah. V was a hair thing, I think. <laughs> All right, hi, um, I'm also a Dean girl, just for the record. Um, but my question for you is very serious. Um, so I need to know, would you rather go 24 hours without your phone and any technology or anything like that for 24 hours, or would you rather go 24 days with no human contact? Oh my gosh. <laughs> 24 hours without phone or 24 days without human contact? Yeah, so 24 hours without any technology. So like you, you have 24 hours where you can't contact anybody, you can't mm -hmm. go on any social media or anything, that. or 24 days without human contact, but you could be on your phone and contact them digitally. Yeah, I think the first thing. <laughs> yeah, the first thing for sure, for sure. I've definitely, I, I aspire to go to an like eight day meditation retreat, so that seems like a good warm up to that. Okay, I'm not, I'm not there, but, <laughs> but yeah, 24, 24 hours I can do. Yeah. Hi. What? Um, so your characters met Sam and Dean on the show, but how do you think that they would react to like meeting the real Jody? and since she took like the other young ladies on the show under her wing? Since, sorry, what was the last part? Since Joni took like the other young ladies on the show under her wing, how do you think that your characters would react to meeting Joni? Oh, we would have loved that. <laughs> We'd like die. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, you feel like any, anyone, but especially, I think, um, you know, another really strong female character. Yeah, maybe I would have played it cool, but then inside I would have been hashtag D E D. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I got it. <laughs> same, same. Yeah, no, that would have would have been fun. So, hi. Um, so Jared and Jensen are well known to play pranks on. Yes, and things like that. I'm just curious, did they do anything that to you or that you witnessed? You know, I think maybe because we were playing high school girls, like they felt like they couldn't do things like that. With us. Like there was kind of a like very like paternal or maybe brotherly. 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 Yeah, kind of a like yeah, like um, protective or like just not creepy. You know what I mean? Like I'm just, like, trying to not be weird. <laughs> 
and yeah, it's like with, with like a bunch of teen girls or people who are playing teens, it's like, oh, we don't want to be that guy, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they were nothing but really sweet and, and kind and charming, but no friends, I don't think. Bummer. Yeah, now I feel um, cheated. You could have been a little bit. Should have been. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about what your reactions were when you got this script and you read the songs. I think I heard the songs before I read the songs. I'm trying to remember. No, I would have. I would have read them first. I loved them. I thought it was really sweet and. Um, I, I think it really spoke a lot about uh, the heart of of the show, and um, I mean, I, from what I know of the fandom and everything, what what really touches them. Um, yeah, I thought the music was just lovely and great and catchy, and I didn't mind listening to it a hundred times to learn it. Um, yeah. I loved um, a single man tear. I just wanted more of that. Song. Right. I, I definitely had to be like, what are they talking about? It was genius, I thought. And then, of course, the, um, the cover of um, uh, John and that one. Is oh, oh, no, Carry On. Carry, carry on. on. Of course, Carry On My Wayward. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I guess that's another strong opinion I have. Like, I love Peter Cetera and, like, Chicago and, like, 80 songs. Like, yeah. I'm like the one small Asian girl in the Toto concert or Chicago concert. <laughs> um, so I was like, this is, I'm, I was so into the cover. It was really cool. Yeah. I thought that this scene was fun with all the props and stuff. And then her burning. And, like, I was like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. And then the lights. With the car. With the car, and we were being driven. That was so fun. Yeah, and then the lo-fi, like, um, you run by with the flashlights in the back to simulate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. I guess that's how they really used to do it sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. That, that was elaborate. Murray had a budget. <laughs> and I actually, in high school, I never actually, I didn't, I was going to be a doctor, like my parents, so I actually never did acting or musicals or anything in high school, so it kind of gave me this experience that I never had. I'm like, oh, this is what it's like to be, like, a, a drama person in high school. It did feel like we were in theater for a bit there, which was really, really cool. Nice little throwback. So you kind of got the experience. It's, it's kind of accurate. Hi. Um, I wanted to know if you guys could be any mythical creature, what would you be? Do you have some options? <laughs> no, like, what, what are like, some? Like a phoenix, siren, unicorn, centaur, fairies, stuff like that. I think that's a I feel like I'm the one that doesn't exist. <laughs> like I would just formulate my own, make my own. It would fly, be able to teleport. Um, it'd be cute. I would then, be Nyan Cat. Does that count? <laughs> you know, the cat with the rainbow and the t looks like a piece of bread or something? <laughs> That'd be bad. Cause I, at first I thought Loch Ness Monster, but then that seems lonely, because that's the only one, right? Or like, maybe there's one more. Then Loch Ness Monster will like maybe never find love or something, so, yeah, and cat. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I like um, uh, um, um, Valcourt from The Never Ending Story. He kind of reminds me of my dog, so that might be a fun one. He flies. Hi, this is a super random question. But you said that you didn't use Sharpies on paper. What do you use them on? Um, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I guess skin. Um, although I guess that's probably bad for you. Cardboard, but Sharpie on cardboard is also painful for me. Yeah, it's a sound, yeah. <laughs> I don't like it, it's a necessary evil. <laughs> sound like balloons. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like that. <laughs> All right, hi. Katie, this question is for you. What is the most interesting, exciting, or scary part about working on In About 100? Most interesting or what? Or scary. Or scary. Most interesting or scary. Um, <laughs> I just had a memory. So when I uh, was in demon form, which was fun. Oh my gosh, you guys should have seen the first version of the demon. She was even 
God, ugly. Um, it was, but anywho, so we didn't have we, trailers, we had rooms because we were on the sound stage. And um, I was in my room and I had to pee and I left the door open and then there was a mirror in front and the lights were off. <laughs> and I came to look up and I went, what the fuck? <laughs> it was me. It was a demon. Um, and so that was scary. <laughs> Uh, and then, oh my gosh, there, there was a moment where they were doing a shake test because there's, there's a part where um, all the artifacts in the room uh, shake and everything because Annabelle and possession and stuff. And uh, we were supposed to walk on this path, me, M McKenna, and Madison, um, and go from this side of the room to this side of the room. And this was the first time that they were shaking everything in the room. Um, and thank God we did a test run because this giant bookshelf with glass fell right where we would have landed, right when we would have landed, which was terrifying. Um, so set safety protocols are great. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall that was just a blast, a blast of film. Uh, yeah, that, that is all. <laughs> Um, I was wondering about the slime at the end of the episode. Um, how did they do that? And I think, uh, Katie, you ended up with slime. How did they do that? Did I? Did I have slime on me? I don't think. I think it was in the clear. But I just, wa yeah, I remember. I was like watching the whole thing. Um, how did they do that? I don't know. I just remember it being purple because TV. Um, I don't Yeah, was I, was I in that scene? Oh my God. It's, you were probably on the side. Maybe I was on the side, yeah. My god, I should remember. I don't know. That's a good question. I want to picture it like the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards, but they just think <laughs> slime everybody, but I have no clue. Uh, yeah, I just thought that part was fun, though. Sorry, I don't know the details. Hi. So I used to work um, at a doggy daycare. And every time I would interview new hires, I would ask them a question. So if you were any breed of dog, what kind of dog would you be? I mean, I wish I could say she be Inu, but I don't think I'm that like active or cool. Um, <laughs> I have to think about that. I mean, I feel like I'm partial to multi-foods because I have one. So probably a multi-food because I just think they're really cute and sweet and loving and affectionate and just want to be with you all the time. Um, and that's me with, with people that I like, not people that I don't like, but the ones that I do, I'm very attached. Um, that or a husky, those are very different. <laughs> Maybe I'd be a chihuahua because they have like big eyes and they're tiny and they're spastic. <laughs> <laughs> and like lots of energy and like kind of run away from you a little bit. <laughs> growing up was a hardcore Invader Zim fan, and I, this is a question for Joy. What was it about it that just inspired such a passionate response from you? Oh my gosh, I don't know, it was so quirky. Um, it felt really smart. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the, I thought the voice acting was great. I ended up, uh, like, uh, when, I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I grew up, I got to like take voice acting class with Richard Orbitz, who's the voice of Inv Invader Zim, and it was so good. Um, I love Dib. I had a crush on Dib. I dressed up like Dib in seventh grade or something like that um, for Halloween. Um, I thought, yeah, I thought it was like super cute. I love Gaz. I like thought she's like my spirit animal because uh, she's like kind of gothy. So I, I, I like shopped at Hot Topic too, and I like still do. Um, and then yes, and then uh, what else? I, I thought the writing was so different from like a lot of um, Nickelodeon stuff at that time. Like I feel like they really took a chance with. Joan and Vasquez, I'm like dropping all this random other fandom knowledge on you, but Joan and Vasquez, like he was like, um, he wrote this cartoon or this comic called Johnny the Homicidal Maniac or something. And Nickelodeon was like, that guy, we want that guy to develop a series for us. Um, but it felt so different, and the like art was so cool and like beautiful. I love the colors, and it was so unique from anything else that was on Nickelodeon at that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also like Danny from Danny Phantom. My, um, my junk email address is Joy Fenton. <laughs> <laughs>
I have a crush on Doug Funny. <laughs> Doug Funny and Hey Arnold, but also Aladdin. Oh, so Aladdin. that one's like, okay, I can get that. But like, Doug Funny? See, at the end of your episode, there was a surprise guest at the very, very end. Did they let you know any of the meeting, or are you like, why is this guy behind an umbrella? It, you know, during during the so that the fans who were there couldn't see him. Like, what's the? Oh yeah, yeah. We had to wear like um, I forgot about that. We had to wear like things that hit us because they were fans that were like came to the school to watch us film and stuff. How was really cool. We met some of like, the little Sam and Dean dolls. And yeah. That was really fun. Um, we had to walk around with umbrellas as well, but yeah, they were very protective of the, the call sheet and stuff. No, we were told the importance of it and, um, you know, the Chuck Roper songs. Um, yeah, one of the episodes we were assigned to watch had him in it. Yeah. Um, and it kind of explained the backstory, and it was in the script, so we knew it was going to happen. Um, but it was really cool, um, and it, it and, uh, definitely was sad that, like, we only got to act with him for one line. <laughs> but he was so kind, though. Yeah. 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 It was definitely really cool to like, um, it was like my, the, the longest job I had worked on at that time. So it was really cool to like see, um, you know, veterans, it's like, oh, people have been doing this role for like 10 years. Like, it was just like cool to see them snap into it so quickly and to see how they worked and how they engaged with the characters and the material and stuff. It's like a master class in acting for me. Yes. And a lot of the crew was like the same from season one, which is kind of, I feel, unheard of and that just shows how familial. It was and um, yeah, a well oiled machine that yeah. had things were run. Oh, yeah, everyone was so cool. Hi, um, I have a super basic question. Uh, what was your favorite and least favorite scenes to shoot from your episode of Supernatural? Maybe it was like the big musical stuff, like the stuff on stage, because it was like all of us, all the all the girls were there, and Ella, we were all in it together making a musical, and that was really fun and ensemble-y. Um, but it was also really fun to shoot just like the two-on-two -two scenes with, and the one-on-one -on -one scenes of like Jared and Jensen and Katie and stuff. Um, maybe my least favorite scene was like the scene where we had to laugh, because <laughs> I'm like I'm not that great at like. Uh, Act, you know, fake laughing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing. I feel like fake laughing can be harder than crying. Yeah. I used to look like I was in pain whenever I did. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I remember, yeah, one of the directions I got, like, because um, I was having fun being like very mean and deadpan, and then I think one of the directions I got was like, well, they're still adults and they're still authority figures, so like, you got you got to tone it down a little bit. So I was like, kind of finding the balance too between that. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I loved. Comedically, I love the scene where um, Jensen's asking about everything that's going on, and um, you know, I'm talking about like the the fandom and Destiel and how you can't spell subtext without S E X, and that was really funny. Oh yeah, and then when we called them old, right? I loved that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really fun because I feel like that was when they were really in their own, and um, yeah, I don't know. It was a good scene to like, we got to play off of each other and also got to act with them, which was really cool. Yeah, and then also that scene where um, where Jared was messing with the controls, like, yeah, like I said earlier, to tell him, put a grown man in his place, I don't know get to do that, so that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just loved that for me. Um, it was really fun. That's one of my favorite um, memories ever, is filming Supernatural. Anytime, like, someone asks me about that, I'm like, everyone was amazing. Like, I, I think it's incredible and keep supporting because they're such good people, such such a good show. You know, all of you guys are so amazing and have been lovely every time I've met a fan of Supernatural. It's just a really fun experience. So, keep going off on irrelevant things, but yeah. Hey. Hi ladies, uh, my question is, and maybe you just answered it, potentially. What has been, for each of you guys, your favorite character to play, and why? Don't feel partial to Supernatural. If there is another one you love. I mean, I, I do, I love Maeve. I, I thought she was so fun. Um, yeah, like, she has this power that I wish, like I said, I wish that I had in real life. Like, I wish I, like, didn't give a flow the same way she does. <laughs> Um, yeah, I want to, uh, and then I only had one line on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, but also a character who, like, my one line in, in that was, yeah, bitch, 
so I just like aspired in them. I think in Modern Family, I, I only had a couple lines, but I said, you fools! So I just like, get to, like, I wish I could say more of those random things in real life, I guess. <laughs> um, no, Supernatural was really fun uh, for com comedic reasons. And uh, I mean, I love every role that I play. Thankfully, I've gotten to play uh, a, a variety of things. That's, you know, ultimately the career path that I want and is, is to just um, get to try out all sorts of different walks of life, characters with different quirks and things like that. Um, Annabelle was really fun. Uh, Annabelle comes home. It was the longest I've shot and uh, I got to be, you know, really sarcastic and witty, but also have a really emotionally demanding role where I'm like, bawling for most of the film, terrified, and um, so you just got the whole spectrum of emotions, and that was, that was um, a blast, so probably, probably that. Yeah. Thanks. Of course. Does anyone, does anyone have a strong opinion out there? <laughs> does anyone, anyone have a really strange one? Like now I want to soul search. Like I feel like I'm gonna come up with all of them the second we step off stage and be like, <laughs> nah. yeah. Yeah. But um, this has been fun. This has been great. Um, oh, they're gonna play um fan fiction. Oh yes. At eight. Yeah, they're gonna play the the episode. So you guys wanna see it? Um, oh, they're screening your episode tonight. Yeah, they are. Are you guys Are you guys gonna be in attendance for that? Will we? Or maybe emotionally in attendance? Emotionally in attendance. I, I mean... It's such a great episode. I haven't I, seen it since, like, in a long I know, time. Yeah, I know, yeah, I'd love to see it again. Let's it go. truly is, whenever I list my favorite episodes of the show, it's right up there with the, with the best. It's such a unique episode. You guys are great in it. And Phil Segreza, who directed it, just knocked the leather off the ball. I mean, it, technically, it's one of the most complex episodes the show ever tackled. The musical element of it, the playback of it all, and everything. It was... It's a monster. Good pun, I guess, because it's supernatural. It's a monster episode, but it really was. And I guess you guys have never done one before. You know, forget it. You guys are so late. It's like, it's like, I don't know. I know that you're killing off band members. I, right now, I vote Stevens next. I'm just gonna say it. You know what I'm saying? If, I'm, if you're taking votes. Um, no, it's a great episode. I'm so glad they're. No. <laughs> I'm so glad they're running it tonight. I'm glad you guys are here to, in support of it. Um, and thank you for coming to the convention. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie and Joy!